In this video, I'm going to show you mixing acoustic guitar in Reaper. So I have a project in front of me here with some drums, bass, acoustic guitars, some electric guitars, and some vocals. Let's hear what it sounds like now. Now to make the acoustic guitars easy to hear, let's turn off the electric guitars. As you'll notice, I recorded two acoustic guitar parts, one pan left and one pan right, as we can see right over here. Let's hear them in solo. Now I recorded them with a condenser mic, which is my personal preference as condenser mics over ribbons or dynamic mics tend to have prettier top end, and they take to EQ in a more natural way as we boost the top end. Now, the reason I doubled it is to make up for a sloppy performance, in this case, mine, where if I just used one panned in the middle, we'll notice any mistakes in the performance more. With two, one pan left and one pan right, it tends to make up for the sloppiness in the performance. But the other reason I do this, and more importantly, is to keep the acoustic guitars out of the way, panning wise, of our kick, snare, bass, and vocal, as they're all panned up the middle, like this. Well So if we just had one acoustic guitar in the middle, it'll be fighting for that same space. And we could pan it to the left or right, but that'll throw everything off balance as we're just hearing it on one side. So I prefer to double it and pan one to the left and one to the right, like this. When Making room in the stereo field for everything else, giving each instrument its place. As I like to make acoustic guitars very percussive, so putting them on the sides makes them stick out and make the mix sound wider. But I'm still noticing they don't sound very bright. Even though I used a condenser mic, 
they can still sound brighter and prettier, which like I said, is typically how I prefer acoustic guitars to sound. Now I don't usually compress acoustic guitars as it tends to pump and breathe and ruin the dynamics or their percussiveness. So instead, I usually just EQ them. And to EQ them together, let's create a folder. So I'll create a new track, Control T on the PC, Command T on the Mac. Let's name it Acoustic Guitar. And we'll make it a folder like this. So now this track is affecting these two. So I could solo it or mute it. So any effects we put on the folder track, we're going to hear on both. So go to the effects on this track. Let's go to our filter and type in EQ. And I'm going to choose Re EQ, which is the EQ that comes with Reaper. So I know you have it. And it's also perfect for this task. Double click it. And it looks like this. Now I'm going to start off with the low end and switch this from a low shelf to a high pass filter, which will roll off the low end. I'm going to start by adjusting the bandwidth, which you could do holding down the shift key and make it so it's not boosting the low end. It's just cutting or rolling off down here. But you can see our bandwidth, it's about 1.7. And we can adjust the frequency or how rolled off it is. Now to just hear the low end we want to replace, we could right click the wet dry knob and turn on Delta Solo, which will give us the difference from before and after. So now we're just going to hear what we're rolling off. Then switch it back again by clicking it. Now we're back to hearing it normal, rolling off the low end. We're just trying to get rid of any rumble in the track. Somewhere between 70 and 100 hertz. Then I'm going to focus on the top end. And I want to use a high shelving EQ. Right here, I don't want to use a band EQ as it tends to sound very peaky in the top end, like this. Not very pretty. So instead, we'll use this frequency, which is set to a high shelf filter. So it's going to boost from this frequency all the way up, creating a more natural sound and boost. And then we'll set it to boost our top end to make the acoustic guitars sound prettier. Somewhere around 3.5 kilohertz and 5 dB of boost. But we could also adjust our bandwidth to make sure of the curve we want. This is a bit too subtle. I usually set it to about here, which is about 0.8. Before, Notice it's a bit too dark. It almost sounds like it is a cold, like someone put some tissue in front of our speakers. And after. Now let's hear it in the track. Notice how it matches the top end of the vocal. It extends it 
across the stereo field, matching it in the top end. Pretty simple, as we just changed the EQ, as like I said, I don't typically compress acoustic guitars, as it tends to make it very squished and taking away the dynamics. Because like I said, I really like the percussiveness of an acoustic guitar, and I don't want to lose that with compression. Now another area we can mess around with is the low mid-range which is the meat or the body of the acoustic guitar. Let's solo the guitar again and adjust this frequency if it has too much body. Or too little. Notice this makes it completely percussive with no body at all. Just depends on how big you want the acoustic guitar to sound compared to the rest of the track. But I think it sounds best not boosted or cut at all in this range. Just cutting our lows or rumble and boosting the top end. Now let's hear it all together with the electric guitars. Notice, even in a very busy mix, the acoustic guitars still pop out. We're still hearing them cut through a dense mix by boosting some of the top end to make it sound prettier. So that's pretty much it. That's mixing acoustic guitars in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.